What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're jumping in with more Destiny 2 news. Been a busy week for Destiny as it is, but of course today is Twit, so Bungie jump in. We get a couple of clarifications about some of the content in the update, but on top of that, Bungie talk a little bit more about Pantheon, something we've already discussed on the channel today, but they confirm a few things, and talk a little bit more about Prismatic that's coming into final shape. So we'll break all of the updates down for today, guys. As always, I hope you find the video useful, and now let's get into it. Firstly, yesterday, of course, Bungie did a significant reveal for Prismatic. We already got gameplay of it on Tuesday, but Bungie have shown off the subclass screens now. They also talked about new aspects and fragments, and the unique grenades that we'll get access to when we use the super, like the Hunter's Hailfire Spike, which is a device charged with stasis matter and solar energy that attaches to surfaces or targets and then erupts into a slowing storm, and after a short duration, the device ignites, creating a deadly scorching cyclone. Then the Titans get electrified snare, and we can throw an explosive of device energized with strand matter and arc energy that detonates into a supercharged suspending burst, and the suspended target takes heavy damage over time and chains jolting lightning to nearby targets. So these sound absolutely awesome. Finally though, for the Warlock Freezing Singularity, which lets us throw a mass of void energy and stasis matter, and on impact it deploys a miniature black hole orbited by a halo of slowing ice, and then the black hole implodes, suppressing and dealing heavy damage to all nearby targets. So I think this new Final Shape subclass is looking pretty awesome, but if you want a deeper dive into aspects, fragments, melee abilities, and some of the combinations we can get, that's linked down below. One quick mention though, Bungie did confirm, yes, players can use Prismatic in PvP, and I agree it has the potential to be absolutely broken, but nonetheless, if you wanted that confirmation, there it is. Now though, getting into the twid, Bungie initially recognised the fact that Into the Light launched this week, so they go over some of the new content and the new cinematic that we got at the start of the update. They also provide some pretty cool wallpapers from still shots from that, so those are linked in the twab down below. We'll also run the cinematic at the end of the video. But up next, Bungie talk about Pantheon and they say, are you ready to challenge the gods? On April 30th, Pantheon will involve not only a gauntlet of raid boss encounters currently available in the game, but also a few twists on how to approach them. But the goal of Pantheon is to relive incredible and heroic moments that raids always deliver. Prepare to be nimble, adapt your strategies, or throw them out the window, and your fire team will find success. And they say Pantheon will increase in scale and and difficulty each week, starting with four bosses in the first one and growing up to eight in a row on May 21st, and each time a new boss is added, the active modifiers will rotate and the power cap will change, starting with players at five below power, all the way up to contest mode equivalent of 20 below power. However, as difficulty goes up, so does the pool of available rewards, and we can get adept raid weapons, deep side versions of raid weapons, and even exotic weapons, and some rewards are weekly, while others are linked to pursuits or triumphs, such as four new emblems but many will also depend on your performance, and we challenge you to complete each encounter before the bonus timer expires to get a platinum score and the greatest rewards. So it sounds pretty interesting right there, as we discussed in a separate video, there are some very cool rewards associated with it, the emblems are especially neat, but also the Godslayer title. So between that preview and what Punji have told us in the TWAB today, that gives us a pretty well-rounded idea of what we're getting with Pantheon. So let us know if that is something of interest to you guys. But the next major component for the TWID is that Bungie talk about updating the HUD, and they point out that D2 has over 2,000 player-facing buffs and debuffs in the game that can appear on the HUD, between subclass verbs, armor charge, pervading darkness, or text to help us triangulate a signal on Neomuna. So in the final shape, they've created two new areas in the HUD where modifiers can appear. Firstly, there is critical info channel on the top center, and then there's the weapon channel above the super meter, and we can see that on screen right here. So it definitely changes things up quite a bit, and for critical info, they say modifiers that appear here are important for successfully completing the current activity. That includes things like wipe mechanics, roles like Deep Stone Crypt's operator role, or other special mechanics in the activity that are beneficial for us to notice. And we'll see this channel appear in prime real estate underneath the health and shields. Since we want players to focus on only the most important modifiers here, this channel will not display more than two modifiers at a time. But then there is weapons, and we'll find weapon related modifiers showing up in the space above the super meter, conveniently close to where weapon information appears, and given the high uptime on a lot of the buffs, we wanted to split them out from competing for space with everything else. And once again, the two most important weapon modifiers will show up here. But in terms of prioritization, they say we'll generally find buffs prioritized within all channels as follows. So the highest is activity information, and these are buffs that guide the play through the activity. Then there is second to second gameplay choices, and there are buffs that are required to play your build effectively, such as armor charge or ability cooldowns. Then short to medium term gameplay choices, like subclass verbs, weapon damage buffs, or temporary 
temporary ability bonuses, such as those from Aspects and Fragments. And finally, passive buffs for useful learning or confirming intuition, and that includes ability regen buffs and temporary stat boosting buffs. So I think overall it's looking pretty promising, certainly tidier than what we have at the moment. But they say in addition to setting up two new channels in the hood, the team also took a passive readability of the buffs and debuff icons. So we can see how they've been updated on the screen, and all of the green buffs and red debuffs now have a thick line weight on the top or the bottom respectively to make them easier for colorblind players to read. And subclass related buffs and debuffs maintain their diamond shape, but they more clearly indicate whether they're a buff or a debuff in nature. And we spotted little bits of gameplay inside of the trailers and showcase stuff the other day, so I think it's looking pretty tidy. We'll have to see how it plays out in the game, but probably overall better than what we have at the moment, and hopefully in the long run easier to understand, especially for players coming on board. So give us your thoughts about that below. Additionally, in the TWAB though, they do have a section about items that are going away with the launch of the final shape. So these are things that are going to be taken out of ritual rotations. And they're talking about weapons specifically. So the Trials of Osiris, the Unexpected Resurgence, Cataphract GL3, the Messenger and the Igneous Hammer are no longer going to be in the game. You'll also notice there are dates that those will be available for the last time. Then for the Nightfall, the Braytek Osprey Rocket Launcher and the Loaded Question Fusion Rifle will be going away. But finally for Iron Banner, Joram's Claw, Bite of the Fox, Pressurized Precision and Swarm of the Raven are no longer going to drop in the game, but as you say we can still always focus them on respective vendors, although the adept variants of Trials and Nightfall weapons can't be obtained. Otherwise, they say in terms of weapons that will come to replace these, they will share more info in the near future. So there we go. Those are really the highlights from the twid today. Give us your thoughts down below, but the HUD update's looking positive. I'm certainly curious to see what the Pantheon stuff will be like as well. If you want to check out the video with all of the rewards for that, I'll link it below. But let us know what you think in the comment section. If you've enjoyed the video, a rating really helps us out on the channel. And also be sure to get subscribed if you want to see more Destiny content. But otherwise, I hope you guys have an awesome day. What is a guardian? Are we gods? We are connected to the weft and weave of the universe. No one knows how long we live. We stand alongside those without our gifts. We know intimately their lifespans, their mortality, despite their resilience. Mortals live more intensely than any guardian I've known. Love harder, perhaps. They know tomorrow was never guaranteed. That everything they could become dies with them. So, are we protectors? Our gifts were meant to defend against impossible threats. Those who need us have never needed us more. But we could do nothing, and they would still die. What is a guardian in that moment? Now, across Last City territory, the forces of the Witness surge. Our borders are under siege. Does that make us soldiers? Pushing back buys us only time, but the alternative is unthinkable. We built a city none of us dared to dream of, with allies from unlikely places. We have never had more to lose. I turn the question to you, on the eve of our darkest hour. What is a Guardian? Define us, in this moment, for all time.